All right, so here are all the tools that are needed in order to complete this project. So first thing, you're gonna need two 916 wrenches. You're also gonna need a conduit cutter of some sort. So you can also substitute this one for a hacksaw or something of that nature. You'll also need a utility knife. Make sure that the blades are very sharp because the fire hose is very hard to cut. All right, so moving on to the required equipment for this project, you're gonna need lock nuts, regular nuts, washers, crush washers, and then three eighths by two inch carriage bolts. You'll also need some fire hose that's at least three inches wide when it's flat. Just another pro tip here, guys. Before you buy any fire hose, make sure you check with your local fire department Whenever I did, I got a 100 foot roll of fire hose that they were gonna throw away. Uh, now, as you can see, a lot of it's been used, but this was a 100 foot roll at one point. But just make sure uh, that you go down and check with your local fire department. Oftentimes, they are decommissioning some and about to throw it away. In order to build the stand, you're gonna need some one inch EMT, three quarter inch EMT, some leg supports, which are also going to be in the right up link. And then don't forget your AR500 steel. So depending on how long or short you want your target stand, you can cut it to your specific needs. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this one at 15 inches. After you mark it off, this is when you're going to use your utility knife. I would recommend doing it in a couple different passes. In order to get this nice flexible piece that you're able to slide easily over the EMT, we're going to go ahead and remove the inside portion of the fire hose and then cut off a small portion. After you get the inner hose piece taken out, you're gonna wanna go in and measure five inches back and then cut that portion off. Now, I already cut three and a half inches off accidentally, so I'm just gonna end up cutting another inch and a half. After you get the inner hose piece cut to the desired length, you're gonna wanna take it and insert it back into the outer hose piece until it is flush. You're gonna to wanna to make an X three quarters of an inch up in the center of the hose for where the steel target is gonna be. And then you're gonna to wanna to make two X's about three quarters of an inch in from either side at nine and a quarter inches. You're also gonna put two X's about three quarters of an inch in on either side at 14 and a quarter inches. You're going to want to make an incision on both of the X marks with your utility knife the whole way through the hose on each of your X marks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. In order to get the whole way through, you're going to want to make X's on the back side as well. Now in this step, you're going to be driving these two carriage bolts until they're flush with the hose. In order to do this, I like using a hammer and putting the hose on top of a vise so that I can punch the bolts through. You can also do it by hand, but it's a lot easier with the hammer. Next, you're gonna wanna place the stainless washers on the bolts as well as crush washers on top of those. And then you're gonna thread on the nuts until they're fully compressed on everything. After everything is torqued down nice and tight, you're gonna to wanna to put another crush washer on each and then follow that up with a regular washer. Then you're gonna to wanna to fold over the hose and push the bolts through. Once you have the setup looking 
like this. You're gonna put another regular washer on each of the bolts and then go ahead and place locking nuts on either of the bolts as well. After torquing down these nuts, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that there's a nice round cavity that was formed. You can test it by placing it over top of the conduit, the one inch conduit. It should slide right over and be very free flowing. Next thing we're gonna do is place a carriage bolt inside the piece of steel followed by a crush washer and then a regular nut. After the nut has properly been torqued, you're gonna go ahead and place a washer behind it and then push it through the hose with the carriage bolts facing forward. After you get the bolt to where it's exposed on the other side, you're gonna go ahead and place a washer and a lock nut on that side and then torque everything down nice and tight. And there you have it, a finished product. For the one inch EMT, I like to get a 10 foot piece and cut it in half. That way I have two five foot rods, but you can cut it at whatever length you need for your specific application. You can cut the three quarter inch EMT legs however high you need them, but for my specific application, I like to cut each at 40 inches which is a third of the 10 foot tube. When looking at the cost breakdown of this project, we can see that it costs about $65 total. Now, I ordered all of my components in bulk, so the actual total is going to be a little bit higher. And that price also does not reflect the steel included, but still it is very economical.